We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because Nearly 60 years to the day that President Kennedy declared America would fly astronauts to the moon, NASA is once again preparing to do exactly that. The excitement level is really off the charts right now. Um, everyone is, is getting ready, last minute details and preparations for Monday morning, and um, we, we can't wait. Artemis 1 will launch early Monday morning from Cape Canaveral, Florida, atop Launch Pad 39B, the same pad where Apollo 10 and 53 space shuttle missions began, which is appropriate considering the rocket has a large number of repurposed shuttle parts. David probably knows that better than anyone. He's the Orion production chief engineer for Sacramento-based Aerojet Rocketdyne, and from the very bottom of the rocket to the very top, Aerojet Rocketdyne has their name all over Artemis. Picture that rocket in your head sitting at the pad, at the very base, uh, there are four liquid engines. Those are the RS-25s. Um, I think, as you, as you may know, or some of the, the viewers may know, these were the space shuttle main engines. So there used to be three of these on the base of each space shuttle. Uh, there are now four of these hanging off the bottom of the SLS rocket. Uh, the particular engines were, that we're going to fly on Artemis 1 have actually been uh, flown previously on space shuttle missions. So they've got a, previously a long history already. And now they're being reused here for, for Artemis 1 and Artemis uh, beyond, of course, 2, 3, 4, 5, et cetera. Um, go up to the, that, so that's the first stage of the, of the SLS vehicle. If you go up to the second stage, uh, we have a, an RL-10 uh, liquid engine. Um, RL-10 has, has got a long history in, in space flight, both human and, and exploratory with NASA. I think it's been on every deep space mission NASA has ever launched uh, to date. So it's, it's got a history that dates back to the 60s. It's been evolved and, and upgraded over, over the years. And there's a single one of those on the, the upper stage, as well as a, a handful of uh, steering thrusters that they used to orient and steer the upper stage. Um, and we have those, uh, I think 12 of those uh, MR-106s, I believe they're designated. Um, so that covers the launch vehicle itself. Um, if you go up to the Orion spacecraft, uh, service module is, is at the base of the spacecraft. It provides all the power, uh, the, the environmental systems, oxygen uh, uh, for the astronaut crew. Um, the main engine for that service module is actually a repurposed shuttle Ohms engine. And so if you picture the space shuttle again, there were two smaller engines hanging off either side of the space shuttle. And, and those engines were used for maneuvering out in space. Those engines originally designed and developed, qualified right here in Sacramento back in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, they are now being repurposed uh, for service uh, or for use as the main engine on the service module. So that'd be the engine that, that drives the, the space capsule all the way to its destination and then back to Earth. Uh, in addition to that, we've got another uh, eight auxiliary engines, R4Ds, these are noted as. Um, these are used for uh, backup propulsion in case there's a problem with the main engine, and, you know, more steering of, of the spacecraft itself. And then when the capsule re-enters, uh, the service module is, is jettisoned off. So now the crew capsule is coming in for re-entry. We have a series of eight steering thrusters embedded in the capsule, and they give you pitch yaw and roll control for the capsule to get oriented properly for re-entry. Now, on top of all that, you've got the launch abort system. Uh, its purpose is to pull that crew module off of the uh, rocket if there's an emergency, either on the pad or up until the second stage of the, of the core vehicle ignites. Uh, that's a three uh, solid rocket motor system. We have the jettison motor. Um, that's, again, developed, designed, qualified right here in Sacramento. And so the motor that will fly there was originally built here in I think 2019 and delivered to, to Lockheed Martin. So there may be some folks you know out listening today who participated in that effort. You know, that was a pretty significant effort for us to go build those those motors. Um, its purpose, the jettison motor, it's designed to pull that launch abort stack off of the crew module, uh, whether it's an abort flight or a nominal flight. So it, it pulls the whole system off. And for Artemis 1, since there's no crew on board, the, the other abort motor, uh, abort motors on the launch abort stack are inert. They're just kind of going along for the ride. But obviously the jettison motor is a live motor. It has to pull that stack off. Otherwise the, the test uh, in and of itself would be, 
would be lost. While in lunar orbit, Artemis 1 will travel further from Earth than any rocket intended for humans, breaking the record set by the astronauts of the ill-fated Apollo 13. And although it is uncrewed, except for a dummy nicknamed Munikin Campos after an Apollo 13 engineer, it is the test flight for Artemis 2, which is planned for 2024, and that flight will carry humans into lunar orbit. Artemis 3 will land astronauts back on the moon for the first time since 1972, and eventually beyond. Um, Apollo, you know, they, they were groundbreakers. They got there. Um, they did it before anyone else. It, it was an accomplishment that was unimaginable at the time and, and still almost unimaginable today. And we're, we're setting to recreate that and then build upon it um, that we can take um, humans, build that presence there on the lunar surface um, and, and expand the availability of that, that space mission to, to all walks of life. Um, across um, our, our country and across the world. Um, we're we're going to put the first woman into, on the moon. Um, we're going to put the first persons of color on the moon. It's going to be, um, um, I think it's a milestone that we can all share in um, worldwide, really, this time. The Artemis mission's goal is to put humans um, into space with a sustained lunar presence um, and ultimately build up, hopefully one day, to a sustained Martian presence. And, you know, the sky is not the limit, maybe beyond that.